بهار تلویزیون دی اوالی او پیوستون دیختین غرق Assalamu alaikum, azizan, uh, Bashin. I hope today will be um, something beneficial where people can learn and grow uh, financially. Uh, so I just wanted to remind you what uh, my contact information was. Uh, if we can share my purple poster or uh, image. Um, just to let you know, my uh, email contact, if you have any questions or concerns about anything, is just universalfinanceacademy at gmail.com. Uh, if you would like to follow me on LinkedIn so we can connect um, and hopefully get in touch that way, my LinkedIn is right there, uh, Sinijana Asmorokanivna. Uh, and also, if you wanted to follow my Facebook, where I'll post uh, new information and content, as well as these videos, uh, you can go and search Universal Finance Academy on Facebook as well. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I wanted to talk about an email I recently received uh, from my uh, Universal Finance Academy Gmail. Uh, basically, uh, this Gmail is for anyone. You know, whatever kind of concerns you have, whatever kind of questions you may have, uh, feel free to use it. Uh, so, in this email, I was uh, talking to Hanum Hassan. Uh, she talked to me about her three children. So, she has a seventh grader who she wants who wants to become a doctor, mashallah, and who you know she wants to become an honor student when she goes in high school. She also has a 17 year old who's graduating and wants to become a singer, but is also you know, unsure about how to start her credit score and what she should major in uh, when she goes into university. And thirdly, we also have her, her nine year old who's in fifth grade, but who needs a little bit of help um, getting back on track and being at the same level as uh, her other classmates. So I kind of gave her just my general advice on what from my experiences personally. Uh, in regards to the seventh grader who's interested in becoming a doctor, uh, you know, she has two more years. Your, your ninth grade is when you start high school, and that's when your GPA is really important. So that's when uh, students need to make sure that, you know, they try to get at least Bs or higher, preferably, you know, B plus or As. Uh, you want to have a GPA of at least a 3.5. Uh, and the fact that she wants to become a doctor is really important. It's something that's very long term. It's a very long goal that takes a lot of time and hard work. So what she would need to do is, uh, you know, start right now, read books, go to museums, go and shadow, you know, doctors or medical students. In my seventh grade in my summer, I actually went uh, and learned about hematology and uh, different types of like brain diseases or cancers as well, as well as the heart. Uh, and then that was a free program for me that the school allowed um, many students to join. Uh, and then I got to, you know, write my own paper, also make a, a poster and work with college level students to learn about um, these various medical uh, conditions and diseases. So that was my advice for, for that daughter. Um, and then for the 17 year old, you know, art and music is so, you know, beautiful and amazing and it's very worldwide. You know, any type of music they listen to, you understand it no matter the language it's in. But at the same time, you know, it's important to diversify your portfolio in regards to who you are as a person. That's why I decided to major in both biology and business because I knew, you know, how fast with technology and with the, the type of like markets we have around the world, you need to be uh, very literate in many different fields. So I suggested maybe she go into marketing because that way she can learn how to market herself as well as just have something else uh, in case she needs it in the future. And then with her ninth grader, I was, I suggested, you know, figure out the main reasons why she's having, you know, she's slowing back down. Um, 
is it because of the environment she's in? Is it because she needs to be in a special environment? Or maybe she just doesn't understand the value of school. And if she doesn't, you know, put, in, put her into situations where she would be able to learn um, what happens if you don't get a good education. You know, let her volunteer at different places, like at a homeless shelter, and show her the importance of education. You know, take her to museums, you know, teach her um, how she can use her education in her everyday life. So that was very important. Yeah, so again, feel free to email me. I'm always happy to, to, to answer your questions, and that's why I'm here. So why don't we go ahead and head over to, you know, what is finance? Just like the beginning of everything. Uh, finance, um, it's a lot of things, right? For one person specifically, you know, it can be how you manage your money, how you make your money, how you spend it. For businesses, it can be... You know, how, are you, how do you start a business? How do you keep it profitable? How do you grow it and expand it, you know, both, you know, nationally as well as globally? And, you know, it can also be just in regards to the public when it comes to, you know, the government, how it spends its money, how nonprofits work, how, in, in general, how the society is run and the, how the economy is established, basically. Um, so yeah, we just have this term, you know, finance is a term for matters regarding the management, creation, and study of money and investments. Specifically, it deals with the questions of how, et, how and why an indi individual company or government acquires the money needed, called capital and the company contacts, and how they spend or invest that money. Finance is then often split for the following major categories, corporate finance, personal finance, and public finances. And those are the three topics I'm mainly going to be talking about today. Yeah, so going on to our next um, uh, image here, what is personal finance? Uh, there's so many different types of personal finance. You know, we have budgeting, college planning, insurance, investments, taxes, retirement planning, estate planning, and those are all part of an individual's financial plan. I'm just going to talk a little bit about each section, but uh, further on in the next upcoming you know, courses or lessons, we'll go more in depth uh, into each of them. So budgeting, budgeting is, you know, how do you take care of your money and how do you spend it? Are you spending it wisely? Are you spending it too fast? Are you maybe, you know, keeping too much money and not actually utilizing it for better opportunities? These are all questions you need to ask yourself um, when you create a budget. Uh, college planning, I think when a lot of people start finances, they usually start with college or, you know, high school. Because, you know, as a, as a child, you don't really think about expenses. You don't think about bills or, you know, a car loan or a mortgage, you know, all you think of is, you know, how will I continue my education and how will I be able to afford it? So college uh, planning, you know, scholarships, grants, loans, um, all of those factor in uh, to that specific type of finance category. We're going to move on to insurance. You know, insurance is many different types of things. Car insurance, home insurance, uh, protection, you know, if you get hurt, you know, health insurance. Uh, protection, you know, if you if something if property is damaged or if you accidentally hurt someone else, all those types of insurances are very important. You know, property, especially in regards to if you have a business and you know someone tries to break in, you definitely want to have um, a really strong type of insurance and have a good relationship with the insurance company that you're working with. Moving on, we have investments. You know, the stock market is a really scary place. Many people don't understand what the stock market is or how to you know start your investments and I can understand that you know I'm still trying to understand how you know I would utilize you know bonds or CDs or your certificate of deposits uh, how would I get into stocks how would I get into money markets and I'll go into more depth and uh, give the definitions of those um, specific products later on but that's kind of what investments are you know how to use the money you currently have and grow it over time um, through like a third party or through various other resources then we also have taxes. You know, everyone everyone sees their check at the end of the day and they're like, where did all my money go? And that's because of taxes, you know, for, you know, construction, for, you know, free health programs, for, you know, education to be sustainable. Your taxes have to be, you know, taken out. But we also need to realize the various types of tax uh, taxes that can come out um, and how you would be able to also get money back from the government at the end of every year. Um, with their variance allowances. And that's important to know because if you don't know that there's something you can deduct, you won't be able to get more money back on your return at the end of the year. And I'm, that's very important to, to recognize. So then we're going to go into like retirement planning. Um, you know, nowadays 
It used to be you could retire easily, you know, around 55, 65, but many people are currently still working until their 70s or late 80s. And that's majorly due to the fact of how the economy has created a system where it's just harder for people to afford, have an affordable living and also, you know, just, you know, have money for vacations, for their house, uh, for emergency savings. Um, so I just want to make sure and talk about how early on, you know, in your early 20s, even 30s or 40s, how you can start saving. So when you are able to retire, you know, around 65, 70, you won't panic and realize that you don't have enough money saved for the upcoming um, years due to, you know, depreciation and, you know, inflation over time. And I'll, again, go more into those um, specific terminologies later on. And then lastly, we have estate planning, you know, so a lot of people, you know, they want to own land, they want to own a building for a business or a house. So understanding how to, you know, be ready for that, uh, what you, the process is, how to deal with everything is really important, um, as well as in, in regards to like creating a will or uh, figuring out how to give property to people, um, whether you're living or um if you pass away in the future. So that's all important as well when it comes to personal finance. Uh, so we'll move on now. Um, we can take a, a short break. I'm just going to read through if there's any you know, Facebook comments and also see if uh, there's anything that I can um, you know, talk about more that you would be interested in. And we'll take a, a short break and um, listen to a, a beautiful song right now. Okay, welcome back. Uh, so now we're going to talk a little bit about business or corporate finance. Um, so that is our first uh, orange with a green uh, square. Uh, so basically, you know, everyone, you know, dreams of in the future owning a business. I know in the future, I would like to start my own like nonprofit that deals with, you know, various things. And I'll talk a little bit about that after I kind of explain the slide here. Yeah, so business or finance, it is a lot of work. Um, you know, I have had to take many classes, both in finance and accounting. And if you don't have both of those uh, in your resume available to you when you are starting a business or when you're working with a big company, um, it's going to be very difficult for you. So, you know, a lot of college students right now, you know, even if you're not in business or you're not sure, you know, you know, you want to be an entrepreneur or you might start a business. Definitely take at least one or two finance classes and one or two uh, accounting classes. I think that's very important um, to be proficient ahead of time so you don't have like third parties who try to, you know, manipulate your records or get you in trouble or don't tell you exactly, you know, everything honestly or try to overcharge you. If you know what's happening in your business and you know how you're funding it and how you're using the money, um, then you should be fine. That's, that's all that's really important. So as you can see, there's several parts of business finance. So we have research and development. Uh, so let's, you know, I'll give you some examples like Nike, for example, I went um, to see how they created their sneakers. Uh, and that is part of, you know, research and development. They have to research by, you know, meeting athletes, uh, meeting, you know, normal people, uh, trying different types of materials, creating different types of materials. Uh, and then, you know, patenting it them and then testing them out in the market, seeing if the, the product is something people want or not. So that's all part of research and development. And if you think about it, like everything will continually develop. And that's why you need to have a research department uh, within your corporation. So that's really important. If you think about your phone every year, there's a new phone because they've researched to see what they could change or enhance. And then they've used developers or people within their company to then create a new product that will then be beneficial, uh, not, not only to them, because now they'll be able to create you know, more market and more revenue by selling a new product, but also hopefully for their clients or their consumers um, who are utilizing these products or services. Then we're going to move on to, you know, motivating employees. Uh, a lot of jobs that keep and retain their employees usually have benefits. You know, they have health, they have, you know, sometimes they give gift cards or they'll have days where they give, you know, free food or they have like company events annually. They'll have volunteer days. 
Uh, anything like that is what allows you know employees to feel motivated to stay within their job, to work hard, and also to feel that they are you know valued within their corporation. They're not just another number or another like uh, just someone who is there to make money for the company. They're they're bringing value to the company. They're gaining skills and they're motivated to continuously be a part of the company and share its values as well. You know, some examples for me uh, at working at various places. At the library, they would give us like free movie tickets or free concert tickets. Uh, at my current job at Hearsay Systems, they will have a wheel where you get prizes, you know, based on how well you do, whether you're doing a lot of calls or if you're really good with your customer satisfaction, if you meet your goals on time or above. Uh, and then also, you know, having a 401k or having a Roth, which is more with like your personal finance as well. Uh, having those perks, you know, have, getting a free gym membership such as that, that all is part of, you know, motivating employees to stay within the company and grow within the company. Um, and that will save a lot for the company itself. You know, if you're continuously, you know, hiring employees all the time, you're going to end up like losing money because, you know, the cost of, Hi, you know, interviewing the person, having researchers and hiring people and admin to find people to hire and also having to, you know, get the, the paperwork done costs money and then, you know, leave, having them leave and having that process restart, you know, it's, it's time, you know, spent, it's money lost, it's opportunities cost for, for companies and businesses. Uh, moving on to promoting a company, you know, this is mostly marketing and advertising. Yeah, you see it every day, everywhere, you know, on your Facebook, on any of your social media, on the newspaper, on the TV, on YouTube. There's advertisements everywhere, and there's a reason for that. Because the more a uh, consumer is, um, is shown something or has something kind of put inside of their mind, the more likely in the future they will think about that product or service, you know, when they need it. Uh, I cannot think of a lot of examples, you know, when I think of internet, I always think of like, like Comcast or Xfinity because I always see their commercials everywhere. I always, you know, recognize them as like the, the best streaming service. And that's what I remember about them is that they're the best streaming service because of how well they do their advertising and marketing. You know, they're everywhere and they don't, they don't, they don't try to bother you, but they sit. at the same time, they're not going to stop. That's what is, you know, getting them to new audiences. And that's another thing, like, not only just promoting the company and its reputation, its brand, but also being able to get to new audiences, whether nationally or globally, is really important. You know, we have to think about, you know, age ranges of people, um, you know, the type of culture or traditions they have, economic, social status, education, um, ability to buy products, ability to figure out how they um, continuously can keep that consumer um, loyal to them all um, depends on how well they promote the company now we're going to go on to you know smooth conduct of business you know this has to do mainly with operations or how you know your distribution line is working well you know we start with uh, we can start with like you know creating the product but then you need to have facilities that to, that to make the product or if you have a, a service, for example, um, you know, making sure you have enough people to sell that service or have information about the service. Um, and then there's a long chain that I'll go into in the future, you know, production, management, suppliers, distributors, uh, you know, uh, main chains, you know, compared to like mom and pop shops, uh, then finally getting down to the consumer level and then not just um, once you even get to that bottom line of, you know, getting your product or service to a consumer, you need to think about what's underneath that, you know, customer service, customer support, IT, um, which is like te technology issues, for example, uh, returns, if you have to return stuff and you lose money that way, if there's times where, you know, people just don't pay and then you go into default and you have to have a category within your business where you have an allowance for acceptable debt is the term. I'll go into that a little bit later on. Um, so those are all important in, you know, having a smooth conduct of business. Uh, we're, then we're going to go into like expansion and diversification. So expanding um, can be done in many ways, right? So if you're just a small one little store kind of thing and you just want to keep it that way, you're not probably, you know, going to expand. But if you're someone like Walmart or like Target, for example, they're continuously expanding, you know, McDonald's, any like fast food chain, 
Uh, anything to get your name out and to get your store in multiple areas is really important. You can do it geographically. So I'm along the mountain, uh, Rocky Mountain range, and we I know there's specific stores that are just along that range. Um, but you could also go nationally, the entire U.S. if you wanted to. And then you could go globally or internationally. Uh, so, you know, there's McDonald's almost everywhere now. No matter like what country you go, you'll find a McDonald's, even if it's not the healthiest food. They're, they're just that popular that it's just that affordable for them because they've grown and expanded so much and people trust the fact that they'll continue to grow and be profitable over the years. And so that's important, you know, an expansion is like, do you want to expand when you start a company? And then if so, how are you going to do it? You know, how small or how large? And then you need to think about, you know, increasing employees. Uh, how are you going to get buildings and land, uh, new uh, equipment, you know, again, having new distributors and uh, suppliers will probably likely happen in different regions if your current supplier is not available in a certain place or in a different country. Uh, if you go, you know, internationally, you'll, you might have to make like an alliance or merger with another corporation so that you're able to, you know, be successful and understand the culture and the type of economy that you're entering because it, obviously it's going to be very different and very new um you know specifically if i was to uh compare like the u.s market to you know the chinese market you know it's very different the way they socialize and interact with investors uh how people want to be uh advertised to and you know the price the cost all of that is going to be very different and then that leads into diversification right so we can think of various different types of companies. Um, and then depending on the type of company you have, you're going to have a different line of diversification. Uh, for example, like Dove, we know Dove, you know, for their shampoo, their skincare, their soap. So Dove has a variety of products, but they're all under one kind of market set, which is basically, you know, uh, like uh, personal hygiene and personal, you know, beauty. And that's important to realize that even though they have, uh, you know, several products, all those products are kind of under an umbrella of, you know, personal hygiene. But then we could think of, you know, just like Ford automobiles, right? They just have one product and that's, you know, cars. They might have different types of cars, but in reality, you know, that's what they're under. They're just under automobiles and that's their like line of products and services. And then we can also think of, you know, like giant corporations that, you know, like Kroger, for example, they have, you know, they have kind of everything going on for them in regards to the food industry. You know, they have food products, they have drink products, they even have like cleaning products. They're kind of in everything um, that you could think of when it comes to, you know, your house, you know, household products that you would need. And even, you know, car products or business products, they have kind of everything and they're, they're diversified um, in many lines or many like ways. Um, so it's important to see, like, if you wanted to start your own business, you know, how many, what kind of, like, area or market are you in first? What do you want to be in? You know, do you want to be in cars? Do you want to be in technology? Do you want to be in literature? Do you want to be in art or music? And then from there, you need to think, you know, how many products do I want? Do I want, like, just a line of one type of product, like different types of, you know, cars? Or do I want multiple lines, you know, various types of skincare, shampoos, soaps? And then how will I be able to control and manage all of those and make sure that all of my products are going to be profitable, um, you know, no matter where I'm selling them. Okay, and then meeting contingencies. So a lot of businesses have to do deal with like many kinds of issues, you know, fraud, natural disasters, uh, you know, if the market crashes, being able to stay afloat and have the finances and resources available uh, is really important to a business and making sure that you are ready for anything or any obstacle or problem or issue that gets in your way. You know, we hear daily about companies who get into giant issues. You know, there was a scandal or, you know, recently there was a hurricane kind of near Florida. And, and you know, like I'm sure like people didn't go to Disneyland, for example, or, you know, there could have been issues with um, you know, like someone lied about a company and then their stock market plummets, their stock price plummets in the stock market. Those are all issues that a company needs to deal with and think ahead of, uh, you know, keeping some, some safety net, you know, some money in case they go down, uh, making sure that they have uh, resources or people that they can utilize, you know, like reporters or, you know, investors. 
uh, and the public, making sure that they know what's currently happening within the business and how the company is continuing to you know, stay strong and stay motivated and is open and honest with everything they're doing. So that's very important if you want to have a business to think about those. And then, you know, government agencies, uh, you know, every year you are going to need to be audited. Uh, you're going to have your, you know, your accounts go gone through. You're going to have to have, you know, health inspections, uh, taxes, uh, making sure that, you know, there's no kind of employee abuse or mistreatment. There's so many factors uh, that businesses have to deal with in regards to the government, all the types of laws, all the types of paperwork that are needed. So it's important to make sure that you understand what you're getting into when you start a business, what kind of agencies, especially government agencies, that you're going to have to, um, you know, basically get into, uh, have to deal with, who you're going to have to contact every year, and how you make sure that you are staying um, afloat and you are not doing anything illegal or corrupt. And then we're going to move on lastly to, you know, dividends and interest. Uh, you know, you're going to have, you know, investors and stockholders and the public that is always going to see whether you are a profitable and valuable company to invest in. Uh, usually um, at the beginning, most companies start with like angel investors, people who are companies who are just looking to see startups and see if they see value in them. And then they'll give them some money to help them start up. And then if they are profitable, you know, they'll get a share of their um, their stocks, basically. And then they'll become shareholders. So you know, we have to kind of take a step back because we're you're kind of entering into the stock market now. Uh, when you start a company and you are just private, you're not public, that means you can have investors, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have multiple, you know, shareholders or stockholders. Uh, you aren't technically like selling a, a percentage of your company away yet. You can privately, but um, it's usually uh, done uh, at a mass or, or in, a, in a very big way once you become public. You know, so when Facebook became public, for instance, that meant that they were now listed on the stock market and you personally could buy um, shares if you wanted to. Uh, so basically a, a small percentage or a large percentage of the business. And then through that business, if they if they increase their their profits over the, the upcoming year, you would you know, you would gain money or and it can fluctuate up and down. Right. Depending on the market or if they lost a bunch um, at the end of the year, then you could you know potentially lose money on your investment. And then you also have to think about, you know, with shareholders, um, you can, depending on the type of business, you can get dividends. So like a, a percentage of money um, from the business to show that they've been profitable towards you and that they're happy that you invested in them. Um, and then you can keep those dividends. Remember that they're taxed, um, you know, they're going to be taxed. So you have to be careful with that. Um, but that's a possibility. If you get into a you know, very successful business, you could get dividends back. Um, that's a great way to have some additional income as well. But again, it takes time, research, um, and you know you have to be willing to have some money set aside that isn't for emergency use, isn't for normal use, that you're okay with losing because it will happen. You will lose money in instances, and that's why it's important to only ever get into the stock market when you have uh, money available to you that you won't need for anything else. So now we're going to go ahead and move to public finance. Um, there's a bunch of little graphs um, that you'll be able to see. Uh, and then um, public finance, again, it's more dealing with the government and, and government agencies, whether they're, you know, profit, nonprofit, uh, statewide or uh, nationwide, you know, just the government or the, the state government. So we'll start with uh, spending, revenue, and uh, fiscal balances. Uh, you know, every quarterly or, or annually, you know, the government may, needs to make sure that, you know, they are not spend, overspending. Of course, right now in the U.S., we have you know, trillion, trillions of dollars of debt, but hopefully it'll get better in the future. But, you know, also having money coming back in, revenue, um, you know, from sales. You know, we have a lot of, you know, economic trade or international trade that helps our economy with you know other countries and that's important to continuously have those kinds of relationships so that one day we aren't stuck where we don't have any you know income uh, or revenue coming in for the government because then everything would just shut down uh, we have expenditure components so you know how are they spending the money what issues could there be how can they manage the money and the best ways what opportunities are lost what opportunities are won uh, stuff like that. 
and then revenue components there's you know there're various factors into revenue it's not just you know cash coming in um, and we'll talk more about those components in the future because I want to really delve into like what is revenue what can you count as revenue is it varies depending you know if it's personal or if it's corporate or if it's government you know debt and assets um, if we're looking at it on more of a personal outlook you know debt is money you owe assets are you know things of value that you currently have but sometimes your assets can actually lose value you know the moment you buy a car you know it's an asset for you technically right it's something that is helping you and providing you um with some kind of use you know in transportation music entertainment uh protection when you're outside stuff like that and that's very important but at the same time the moment you drive it off it's you know you're losing i think what is it about like 30% or 20% immediately the moment you drive it off and then continuously over the years as it gets older you're going to continue to lose money and it's going to depreciate so depreciation you know is a loss of value and an asset basically uh, and if we think about governments you know the giant buildings that they have the the equipment that they get for construction uh, the funding that they put into various places like the police force or you know utilities and energy and you know economics and art all of those are going to have some debt and some assets and it's important to recognize how well that they're spending that money as well as you if you decide to have your own business and personally um how you can make sure that you stay out of debt and that the assets you are getting are going to be beneficial long term or you know sometimes short term but make sure that that short term really counts. And now we're going to kind of look into uh, fiscal decentralization. Um, so that's kind of an interesting, it's kind, of, it's kind of a big word, right? So I'm going to kind of find like an easy, kind of easy explanation for you. Hopefully it'll kind of make sense. So, so it's basically when you you have various levels of government, right? You have the very top government, you have you know lower levels of government, and then you have like state level, and then low, lower levels for that as well. And then, so fiscal decentralization is trying to provide a way that, you know, the way that money is managed, the power given is not only given to the top area, but it can also be lower to different levels of government so lower levels of government and hopes of you know creating more uh, a better management style um less politics involved less you know uh, potential fraud or issues because you now have kind of this checks and balances within your government you know not just one branch or one area is in charge of you know just all of the finance or all of the accounting or all of the expenses for for buildings or trade deals with you know other countries it's important to have kind of some kind of uh, breakdown on who is responsible for what and how much power they have um, with that basically and um, then we have like public governance you know again that deals with how the, the government is, is spending stuff how that affects you as a taxpayer as a citizen as someone who has to use various you know resources within your environment uh, making sure your government is you know doing the best that they can and that they are using your money wisely as well as the money that the government itself has generated so we'll go ahead and i'll kind of talk about what i want to talk about um, for the next lesson uh, and then and then just kind of you know talk about my own experiences and hopefully answer some questions that you know people might have that they weren't able to email me or, or weren't able to comment yet. So in the next lesson, uh, so we're going to focus just on personal finance because I know that's what really a lot of people want to learn about. They want to learn how you know they can increase their credit score, how they can save money, how what kind of products um, are in banks, what kind of terms are important to to acknowledge and learn about. You know how they can help. You know how you can help your children or your parents or yourself to become more stable, especially with like the current situation with the pandemic. Uh, a lot of people who didn't have the funding or resources, and if they were laid off or their job was frozen, were you know in a lot of. It was just very difficult for people because you didn't have an emergency savings of a certain amount. You didn't have you know backup cash that you you know kept safe and separate. You didn't have, you know, separate opportunities for jobs that you could easily get into. 
just due to what kind of like career path you might have been. So acknowledging how to stay stable in a regular environment as well as in kind of an environment that might be, you know, more difficult to deal with. You know, if you have, if you're involved in a disaster, or like a natural disaster, if you, you know, lose your job, you know, if there's a pandemic like now and everything kind of shuts down for a couple months, uh, what can you do ahead of time to make sure that you are financially prepared and ready uh, so you're not going to get into, you know, any debt or, you know, any trouble uh, in the future? You know, you won't lose your house, you won't lose your property, you won't have, you know, your, your, your checking or savings account or credit cards overdrawn. Um, those are all important things that I'll make sure to discuss next time. And then I also want to go into, you know, equations. There's various equations, you know, beginner, kind of intermediate and like very difficult equations that I had to learn while I was taking my like finance and accounting courses. And I want to kind of start with the very simple ones that you could use, you know, to figure out like a loan payment for a car or a house, to figure out the type of interest that's going to be owed over a certain amount of time, uh, to figure out, you know, how much um, you're gaining or losing if you buy like a certain asset or a certain type of like product or service, um, you know, also like equations for figuring out whether a company would be successful, if it's something you should invest in, or if you, or if it's something that isn't doing as well as you had hoped it to, and then you don't invest in it and you don't lose money in the future. So those are all important types of uh, equations I'll be kind of talking about. And if anyone has like something specific, some kind of equation, or we have calculating something in finance that they would like me to to share and talk about, uh, you know, please email me or comment down below and I'll, I will go ahead and do that. And also like real life applications. Uh, I want to talk about, you know, real instances of where people either have a really great experience, or have, you know, an okay experience or have a really bad experience in any kind of financial or a personal financial financial choice that they decide to partake in. Uh, and I want to do that because I want people to realize that no matter what kind of situation you are, that there are ups and downs and there are also possible solutions to, you know, if you get into some kind of trouble or you think at the beginning right now I'm okay, but in the future something happens and you're not okay, how can you stabilize yourself again and either get out of the situation you're currently in you know like refinance or you know get like some kind of debt forgiveness or to make it better you know figure out how to get investors to come back to your company if you lose money or how to you know get your credit score score back up if you made a mistake while you were younger or you just didn't know how to use you know credit cards um, or open loans and such stuff like that like real real life experiences that I personally have had and that I've seen other people have. Um, and hopefully they'll be able to, you know, help other people and be something, you know, valuable. Uh, so I want to kind of take a break right now. Uh, we'll listen to, you know, something else. Uh, and then I'm going to kind of talk about my personal, uh, you know, personal finances. Um, so I can kind of give you some explanations and then next time I'll give you more broader examples of other people of businesses as well um, so that'll be helpful okay so I'll like um uh, I'm happy that everyone is here to kind of finish up the the day with me or start the day depending on where you are uh, and I just kind of wanted to you know go over some of the topics we talked about in regards to my own personal life uh, Starting with, you know, what is personal finance? Uh, I'm going to just talk about my own experiences with the various different um, categories. Uh, you know, in regards to budgeting, I've barely just started to figure out how to make a budget. And in the future, when uh, we start talking about finances, I'll give you, I'll show you an example template on Excel. Uh, and if you want it, I will email that template to you if you ever want to start your own budget. Uh, budgeting usually involves uh, figuring out first how much money you make and taking out taxes. So the overall, um, the income that you make without, without taxes, with taxes taken out basically. And then you, after that, you kind of uh, figure out, you know, your expenses, your bills, you know, cable bills, your cell phone, your cars, your insurance, you know, rent, utilities, you know, and then you also have to have, those are your long-term expenses. Then you'll go into more short-term expenses, 
uh, that deal with, you know, emergencies like medical, uh, if you ever have, you know, like a tire, if you have like a tire that blows out and you need to buy a tire just quickly, um, if there's ever a time where, you know, if there's a small fire and something gets damaged that you can easily replace, you know, those are all part of like short term um, kind of expenses that might occur. And then you also have to think about, you know, your long term investments and your short term investments. How much money are you saving long term, you know, for like a house, for example, or short term, maybe for a vacation? And how much are you investing in the stock market, you know, with CDs or bonds, etc. And then you also need to figure out how much you kind of have to uh, keep aside, you know, just for emergencies, for anything that could be that could happen. And usually the rule is to have at least two paychecks worth of money saved just for emergencies. Uh, this doesn't have to do. This isn't like expenses at all. This is just for an emergency. You know, if there's a big catastrophe or if, if someone gets really sick, something like that, that's more like long term or sudden or shocking. That's when you would have at least you need to make sure to have at least two months of, of your paycheck saved up. And that's very important. Then you need to kind of look into your future goals. You know, what do you want to do in the future? And then um, kind of what you're saving up to. Why are you saving up to those things? How are they beneficial for you? Uh, you know, other kinds of saving programs, other kinds of opportunities, like, you know, getting into a business or getting into research uh, development and stuff like that. And then, you know, college planning, I really explained about because that was something that was a big part of my life. Uh, you know, not having the resources allocated or known ahead of time. Uh, if I hadn't known, you know, about the scholarships available to me, about FAFSA, about other kinds of important, you know, factors, I would have been in a lot of trouble. I wouldn't have been able to, you know, get the Daniels Fund Scholarship. So making sure to look ahead of time on, you know, prospective schools you want to go to, the tuition costs, the book costs, you know, transportation costs, living and expenses are all very important um, to look into before you even decide to go to a college or university. And then from there, figuring out what kind of um, opportunities you can get so you don't have to pay for a certain amount and how much you will probably have to pay um, separate from like scholarships or grants. And you'll either have to get like a loan or you'll just have to pay it off either monthly or, or one lump sum. So it's important to think about those things ahead of time. Uh, so you can, you know, give yourself some time to to understand your opportunities as well as um, kind of the potential uh the issues that you might have in regards to financing for your for your college or universal university education, and then uh, you know insurance. Uh, I'm again. I'm just going to talk about the various types of insurance in the future. So nothing right now. Uh, investments, though, I do want to talk about that a little bit. I if there's anyone has you know a little bit of money that they kind of want to use to invest in, I would suggest using like the Robinhood app. Uh, if you want have a lot more money available to you, um, I know there's various uh, different, you know, organizations, uh, both just like American or, you know, even uh, like like Muslim or Middle Eastern based, depending on the type of uh, stocks you want to get into or bonds, etc. So I'll go ahead and look into those types of companies and products available to people. But I would definitely, you know, start with Robinhood. I started with, you know, like $100 and I would just, you know, get into a bunch of little stocks that weren't a lot of money that didn't weren't you know anything very you know just like into energy or into education you know stuff that was helpful and um you know the companies were interesting the companies were doing something good uh, i would suggest you know you know 20 40 100 dollars you know just try it out make sure it's money that you don't need immediately um and, and on there, you can also see, you know, the company's um, statistics, how well they've been doing over, you know, a month, over a year, over five years. You can see uh, the competition, how they're doing compared to other people in the same, like, market or sector. You can see uh, how many people are buying it, how many people are selling it, how many people are, are keeping those stocks uh, on a long-term basis. So all really important information. Uh, you can just download it and look at all of that information without even putting any money. So that's something important to, to think about as well. Uh, and then taxes and retirement planning and estate planning, I'll, I'll talk more into detail in the future. 
is, you know, there's a lot that you have to deal with in regards to them. Um, and hopefully, you know, uh, people will have more questions. Uh, remember again, my, my email is at universal, universal finance academy at, at gmail.com. And then again, if you, if you want to just message me on that universal finance academy, Facebook page, or comment down below that's great as well because i really want to help people you know be be financially strong um, and knowledgeable and you know be able to help other people in the future as well so i hope today was a good beginner presentation and lesson and i hope uh, that in the future we'll also be able to go over a lot of other important things and i just really thank you for for watching today and i hope that um i'll get to to show you and teach you some new stuff uh, next week on saturday so Tashakur and Khlafiz.